Compared to other machine learning AI techniques, deep neural networks have an almost uncanny ability to learn very complex behaviors. Unfortunately, they're also essentially black boxes, computing machines where we know next to nothing about what's going on inside. This makes deep neural networks fragile to changes and can make them fail in ways that are pretty much unfathomable to the researchers training them. A recent new branch of AI, XAI, or explainable AI, might just have ways of peering under the hood of deep neural networks, and by doing so, help us to improve the robustness of our network models, which could help make Tesla's full self-driving even better. Let's find out how. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. I want to give a special thank you to Arthur Choi at UCLA for inspiring this episode and also providing a bunch of the images and, of course, the knowledge. He dropped the knowledge on me. So I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. I'm going to put a link to just a few of his many, many, many articles in the description below so you can check out further if you're interested. This is his specialty area, not mine. So I'm doing my best to pass on this brilliant insights to you guys. Anyway, so, you know, <laughs> forgive me if I don't have everything exactly right, but I think I've got it mostly right. So hopefully I'll do a good job passing on your stuff, Arthur. And a quick caveat, as most of you know already, I do not work for Tesla and I do not know if they're using XAI to help their training. It would make a ton of sense if they do, however, and if they don't, honestly, they should probably watch this episode and consider using it because it's incredibly valuable as a way of increasing the efficacy of your training and making sure you can absolutely guarantee that what you're doing is working right. So neural networks are actually very simple on a basic level. You have inputs, you have some sort of nonlinear activation function, which combines a bunch of the inputs and decides whether to fire or not. And then you have an output or many outputs. The problem comes when you have hundreds or thousands or millions or billions of these connections, which is true in a lot of modern models. How each connection's weights affect the output of the model becomes next to impossible to discern. Soon, I promise I'm going to do a multi-part neural network introduction. So for now, just <laughs> let's put aside the details, assume it, and we'll continue from here. As this graph from Dr. Choi shows, neural networks have a high predictive power, but a low explainability. And what that means is we just don't understand why they're making the decisions they do. So they predict very effectively, but when they fail, we're like, why the heck did it fail? Or when it succeeds, we're like, why did it succeed? Also note on this same graph that decision trees have the kind of opposite of that. They have relatively low predictive power, but they have a much higher degree of explainability. I'll put a quick graphic of a decision tree up here. It's, uh, it's just basically what it sounds like. It's actually, I think of it as a root system because it's actually upside down. Usually the, uh, the the node starts at the top and the leaves are all at the bottom. But anyway, it's, it looks like a tree, right? It just branches out and branches out. Due to the complexity of neural networks, they can come up with some amazing predictions from their inputs. But they are highly sensitive to noise at a level that human beings can't even see. For example, take this picture of a cat, right? This is a cat and the, a human identifies it as a cat and a computer algorithm or model, neural network model, identifies it as a cat. But if you add the tiniest amount of noise to the picture here, which human beings can't even see, the, the computer algorithm is completely blown apart. It has no idea what that is anymore. Random changes can also fool a neural network in seemingly baffling ways. For example, a stop sign is a stop sign and humans recognize it as such and neural network models recognize it as such if they're properly trained. But watch, if we cover up a few parts of that stop sign, suddenly the neural network says this is a speed limit sign. Why the heck does it do that? What we really need here is a more robust neural network model. This requires more and more obvious changes to an image or a video to fool the neural network. So in other words, it behaves more like a human being. It requires quite a bit of stuff to be blocked for us not to recognize a stop sign anymore. What we're looking for is the neural network to behave that way as well. But the problem, of course, is how do we achieve this if we have no way of understanding why a neural network is fooled and what it's doing under the hood? 
Enter XAI. <laughs> this does not use neural networks. It uses one of multiple different possibilities. The first one I'm going to show is, I guess, the oldest, and I mean by old, like a few years old. <laughs> the oldest uses decision trees, which again, as shown in the graphic before, have a low predictive accuracy, but have a high explainability to analyze what's going on in a neural network model, and also specifically the images that are being fed to the neural network, which is actually very critical. What is happening with the data. The low predictive accuracy might seem like a big problem, but it's not that big a deal because it's only really ferreting out the places in the data where the neural network model works well or is robust and poorly or fragile. So XAI aims to open the black box and figure out why deep neural networks are making the predictions they make. This doesn't get into the guts of the neural network, it just pulls out the most relevant aspects, namely how it is making a decision and for images, what parts of the images are the most important to that decision-making process. But actually this high-level understanding of what's going on is exactly what researchers need, right? They need to understand the big picture, they don't need to understand what every single connection is doing. And so researchers can use this information to construct a better data set or build a better neural network model. Let's look at an example in just a second, but first, if you enjoy this video, definitely make sure you like it so other people can find it. YouTube depends on that for its algorithm. <laughs> Speaking of AI stuff, and also subscribe if you enjoy this stuff or if you want to see those neural network um, episodes because I'll be doing those and so you'll be able to find out about them. Also a big shout out to my patrons on Patreon. It's uh, It's been a great ride and I really appreciate what everybody has done and we're ha we have a Discord channel now and so we're starting to have some conversations. It's pretty cool. You can get on you know relatively early on and catch my ear if you'd like to. A special shout out to the new patrons since last episode, Michael McHenry, Vivian Monterey, I hope I got that close to right, Kim No. I hope I got that right also, or at least a little bit close. And Jacob, oh, hopefully that one's easy. And again, thank you to everybody, whether or not I pronounce your name correctly, I try, <laughs> but I definitely appreciate your support. And as always, a shout out to Zenly Music. You can find his link down there or just search Zenly Music. He's an amazing composer and yes, he did a silly thing for me, but he you should he's really worth checking out. You should check out his, uh, his music, he's great. And if you're in the market for a new Tesla, feel free to use our referral link also in the description. If you buy one and you use that link, we both get 1,000 free supercharger miles. Let's look at an example. So let's take wolves and huskies. They're pretty similar looking animals, right? And so it's an interesting thing for AI to try to resolve the issues with determining which one is which. So we set a graduate student to do some work. She goes out and she finds a bunch of pictures of wolves and a bunch of pictures of huskies and she throws them at a neural network model and it has amazing predictive capabilities like 90%, 90%, 99%, something like that, something amazing. But then we notice that it has weird failings, right? If we show it a picture of a wolf in a zoo, it fails. Or if we show it a picture of a husky in a winter landscape, it fails. And we're like, what the heck is going on? Why is this? Well, <laughs> here's where explainable AI can figure things out. What it can actually show, and it has shown, is that in this particular data set, the data set was flawed because almost all of the pictures of wolves were wolves in the snow, and almost all of the pictures of huskies were huskies not in the snow. So what the neural network actually learned was whenever it saw snow, it identified it as a wolf. So unlike human beings, it wasn't looking at the animals at all. It was actually looking at the landscape and whether or not it had snow. As Ribeiro et al. described, they can use the Lyme concept to simulate the data set and interpret what's going on when the neural network model determines whether an image is a husky or a wolf. And by the way, Lyme stands for Locally Interpretable Model Agnostic Explanations. So there you go, if you care what Lyme is. Lyme's a lot easier to say. So again, what we found out from this XAI was that the neural network model was not looking at animals at all. Thus, what needs to happen in this case is we need to rework our data set to have pictures of huskies in the snow and wolves in pictures without snow in them. You create a more robust data set, you get more correct predictive behavior, and you get success. So here, being able to explain what the neural network was actually identifying as it was differentiating these two things was critical to being able to create a more robust model that actually had better predictive power 
on a on a real data set as opposed to the one that the graduate student <coughs> always blame the grad students but you know she had collected the wrong data right it, or a biased set of data and this is very very common i mean it, it, google had big problems a few years ago about uh, facial recognition because they had mostly trained on caucasian um like us citizens uh, like of European descent. And so when the, the network saw, when the model saw people of different ethnicities, it didn't identify them as faces or humans or something. So that was a problem and it was based on the biased data set. But with this kind of tool, you can actually immediately identify what the problem is and you can figure out how to fix it. And even more importantly, we can also do this with neural network models themselves, making the models themselves more robust. And this is Choi's specific area of research. So as he goes into, Lyme is an approximate, not an exact or provable explanation. And it might be good enough for a lot of cases, but consider something like a legal case or in the European Union with their necessity to have explanatory abilities for any type of AI predictions. In those kinds of cases, exact is definitely better, especially if you can prove it. So using choice method, you can go beyond mere data and also prove that a neural network model is more or less robust as well as a data set. The technique, which is tractable circuits, sort of creates a, a logic gate or computer chip diagram out of a neural network set of connections. This is called a tractable Boolean circuit. The advantage of this, and for anybody who has taken a formal logic class, you'll understand this, is it creates an exact decision table or so that you can actually see what the decisions for any given set of inputs will be on a Boolean level, a zero or a one. Thus you can run the circuit with different inputs and you can see what the output is. And thus you can prove whether or not this circuit is robust to real world data, right? If it's making accurate predictions based on your inputs, then it is robust and it's provably that way because you can go through every real possible output. And if it's not, then you can show that it's not robust to that. And of course, there are levels of this, right? It doesn't have to be an all or nothing in, in any kind of complicated circuit, which by the way, you know, three <laughs> is not very complicated. In reality, the table would have thousands or millions of columns and rows. So it would be much, much, much larger than this. But you can statistically look at this and you can determine what percentage of the time it's making the right decisions or not. And that's kind of a provable level of explainability there. So let's look at Choi's example of some very simple numbers. <laughs> why is one uh, why is one number a one identified as a one and one number is identified as a zero? Humans would see this as a vertical line going up and down is a one and a circle is a zero. That's kind of how we think about this, right? But with tractable circuits, we can actually see that a neural network sees only these white pixels in this image as a zero. That's all that matters. It doesn't care about the rest of that image. And it sees these black and white white pixels are a one and it doesn't care about the rest of the image. And this explains exactly why the neural network can identify what looks to us like a zero as a one. So this is a pretty simple example, but think how useful and, and helpful that is, right? Do we need to create a new data set that has more robust examples that break this so that it has to learn a better model? Do we need to create a new deep neural network model for it to understand how to do a better job? In any case, we can make adjustments because we have an idea of why it's making these decisions. And of course, we can assign a robustness number given the data. So this particular example of a one is a very robust one. And this particular example of a one is a poorly or non-robust one. So of course, as always, the question is, why does this matter? Well, you could make bad medical decisions or you could make bad employment recommendations. AI is used a lot as a sort of first screening test when they're, when employers are looking for new employees. So you could make a bad decision on that. Or in the case of Tesla, you could make bad driving decisions, which could lead to accidents. So we really do need to know why our neural networks are making the decisions they are, not just that they're making the right decisions for what seem like the right reasons, but to actually try to prove that they're making the right decisions for the right reasons. And of course, beyond this, it's just reassuring to know that a given model is robust and operates like human beings believe it does. If it sees a stop sign with leaves on it, it still registers that as a stop sign because the model is robust, rather than seeing that as a speed limit sign, which could cause problems. Does Tesla use this? 
I'd love to know, actually. <laughs> Please comment below or send me an email if you happen to have any insider information on this topic. I hope you found this episode interesting and informative. I found it fascinating to work on. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed and who's liked the videos. I really do appreciate it. It's just overwhelming your support. I really do appreciate it. By the way, just one other thing. <laughs> I've had this up since day one, and somebody finally started talking about this and saying that this was my wife. It's not. But I'm going to give a gold star to the first person who emails me and tell me tells me what this is from. This is very specific, and I have it for a reason. <laughs> Three words, right? And I think actually New York and London, maybe? So that might be a clue. Anyway, first person who emails me gets a shout out in one of the episodes coming up. Thanks again for watching, and please do ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is Dr. Know It All Knows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye bye.